Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Beatings in Space, a SD Gundam G Generation Genesis uh, playthrough. Uh, my name is Zimbardo, and with me once again is... Megalomaniac. Hello, Internet. Hi, it's Katera. And I'm Ebby. Good day. Uh... Yeah, so last time we started off at the beginning of the One Year War, uh, so showing off the uh, final uh, the final use of the big cannons before mobile suits uh, became a thing. So now we're actually going to see how mobile suits has kind of changed the war uh, as we go on into the next mission, which is uh, the first episode of uh, Zionic Front. Which, um, what was that? It was a PlayStation 2 game yes. back in the yeah. 2000s. 2000? Hang on. It had to Hang have on. I, I have the game right yeah. here. Let me check the copyright. <laughs> well, I have a Xeon flag behind me, so I'm going to claim that as my nerd cred. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I'm not down with Xeon. They're worth it. right. 2001. <laughs> okay. That, it was worth it. <laughs> that sounds about right. That would be the... Colonies deserve place. independence. <laughs> I figure it was probably 2000 in, in Japan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zionic Front was interesting. It was like halfway between a simulationist and an arcade uh, mecha combat game. Um, which, which, like, for the most part, actually worked fairly well because, like, you would fight things that. Like, basically, it, it sort of presented. Uh, the mobile suit combat of this time fairly well because a lot of the stuff that you would fight you would like they, the tanks would deal little damage to you and you if you were like going up straight against another mobile suit it would not be like an easy battle and but, when you fought the Gundam it would one shot you and the Gundam would, would just wipe the floor with you except that's awesome except like the one the one thing that Zionic Front had was Back attacks were always fatal. Yes. Okay. Even on the Gundam. Yes. <laughs> Which, Whoa. like, there is, yeah, like there is, there is a bonus stage at the very end of the game. Um, yeah, they basically intend for you to do that. To, like, yeah. Sneak around the Gundam and shoot it in the back. Yeah, pretty much. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like if you attack yeah. basically any mobile suit in the back, uh, it is a one-shot kill. It is kind of ridiculous. Um, I, to be quite honest, like there are bit, like there are stages and there are moments in Zionic Front that I remember, but there's not a lot of like the story. So going through it here is going to be interesting for me as well. Yeah, I, I particularly remember them characterizing uh, the like quote unquote main rival on the Federation side in this G Gen way more than I remember it happening. Yeah, but I also remember his characterization like even before seeing uh, him show up again here, like, I have a very clear rem uh, memory of him being an asshole. Well, I mean, yeah, but he's also your enemy in the game. So. Well, yeah. Um, kind of an asshole by default. Yeah, yes. pretty much. He's a fetty. Well, I mean, yes, obviously. <laughs> he reminds me of some character. I can't remember who. Oh. oh. Hmm. Like the way, well, we'll see him in this mission. Someone else in Gundam, yeah. Oh, I, I, I think I know what you're trying. I think I know what you're trying to know. say, but I'm, I don't. I like there are characters that I'm thinking <laughs> of, but I'm pretty sure none of them are making the connection that you quite are. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, he looks like a bunch of the. It might just be it. He yeah. looks kind of like, generic. He looks yeah, like no, for sure. He looks like Clamo Kiyoshiro. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure Clamo Kiyoshiro is much less of an asshole. The wait, doesn't isn't that the kid with the spiky yeah. hair and the like yeah. cap? Yeah. Like the in guy? the same style cuz they look nothing alike. <laughs> mm, maybe. I don't know. It's just what like that seems to come to mind. Okay. When you're talking about hairstyles, looking uh, Nikki Robert here when yeah. this face comes back around. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the characters are CG'd in Zionic Front, or at least not uh, anywhere near this art style. Because that, like that all these like guys, do. all these characters look very different. Let me check the game box again. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, suits. also like what I'll say is. 
one thing that struck me very heavily as I was playing this mission, and like I didn't quite remember it when I was playing the game, but like almost every single one of these characters is an asshole. They are <laughs> such a jerk. I mean, Good. Garrett Schmitzer yeah, I is much less of one. Like he's just a very like he's a very straight commander. But like every other person on the team is a jerk. See, I don't take them as as being. Like, yeah, they're jerks to each other, but I kind of take them as, like, the kind of jerk of you're a military unit who are just kind of, like, making fun of each other. Yeah. That is kind of a trope. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and some of them just gotta get by, like, uh, Matt Austin here, he's always telling bad jokes. Yeah. He is is a terrible punster. That'd make him the worst, but, you know, you gotta cope. (laughs) He, He is a terrible punster. So... Looking at the original uh, manual for the on front, the characters are kind of the same. Okay. The mm-hmm. All um, right. But the Lieutenant Agar, the Federation guy who we'll see, in the manual, he basically looks like Hiro Yui. He's just a bit <laughs> older. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One, one thing I like about the story in this, because the Ionic front, uh, the game was it really reminded me of the original Rainbow Six where at the beginning of before you start actually playing missions you would like plan out the routes of the mm-hmm. AI and stuff that yeah. you take um I like how in the G generation they spend a lot of time going into like the strategies they're going to use and why that's important yeah it kind of gives it that feel of you know strategy and facts are important yeah for sure They they definitely um, tried to make like, even though it's an entirely different style of game like it does try and come across more of like how the game it came from you know, was yeah. like. Did we go over the basics of the story? Like, it's pretty it's pretty self explanatory yeah. in some ways. You're just like a Zeon grunt crew. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the. the, the prologue text kind of went over it a fair amount already, but yeah, uh, your team is basically one of the first crews that got sent down to Earth uh, as part of the invasion. Um, So, like, you're basically... The the game is you basically running around doing things on Earth to to help out the invasion. Um, I don't know if G-Gen has this mission, but I do... Like, the one mission that I... Like remember a lot of is the one where you're you're going around and trying to uh, scout out the white base. And yeah, that's not. Yeah, I would figure no. I would figure that that mission would be really hard to try and represent in in something like G Gen. Yeah, that, that mission was, is tense. That was the one where you learned that the Gundam would one shot. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, like good. everything on the white base would one shot you. Like it was it was a. I mean, it was it was essentially a stealth mission. Um, yeah, but like it, it worked fairly well. Like there was there was enough tension in it as you were sort of taking your squad through these uh, these canyons, uh, trying to get eyes on onto the white base and the mobile suits on it. And like if anything spotted you, uh, it was really bad because they had beam weapons and you didn't. <laughs> I really don't like how Matt is staring at me over this guy's shoulder <laughs> right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how they do that. <laughs> it, it's it's I weird sometimes. Didn't notice. It's weird sometimes. I didn't notice that the other day, and then I, I until the other day when I thought it was the game glitching out on me because I accidentally choose auto text. <laughs> yeah, this is Agar. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. We're also uh, going to run into another quirk with this game, at least the translation of it, where. The name under the character's picture and the name they say in the text are going to be completely spelled completely different. <laughs> I and they're like both valid translations too. <laughs> so when I first saw that, I thought it was just because they were using his last name. Nope. <laughs> nope. Shows how long it's nope. been. I think well, it, it might be his last name. I don't think that his full name is ever given. No, he's just Lieutenant Agar. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and from what I've noticed, the ones under the picture tend to be the more correct one because the translation of the original game was Agar with an A, 
Rides. Yeah, there are a few others where that's for sure. Uh, yeah, another one later on, um, Space Beyond the Blaze, there's a character named Ford. Only and they keep calling him Fold. The text calls him Fold. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in Blue Destiny, they keep calling Ma- Maureen Maureen. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a case of the guys translating the names and the guys translating the actual game text Two Not the same pages. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. But you know, it's a minor complaint compared to uh, a previous translation effort, Super Art Wars Moon Dwellers, which was essentially machine translated. <laughs> uh, eventually, I'm going to play that. Yeah that that game's translation is just kind of nonsense gibberish from a grammatical standpoint. <laughs> Vs was better at least. Yeah, they... Vs was pretty yeah, good. I yeah, V and I this, need to play that one too. It's a few there were s- quirks, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Genesis's translation is definitely... It's rough. Like, they needed an editor, but at least it pretty much gets the point across. Like... You, you can actually yeah. sort of see, like, a lot of this dialogue here. Like, it's it's probably accurate, and it is certainly, yeah. like, meaning something, but, like, none of these are how people talk. Right. Though, to be fair, most Gundam dialogue is also not how people talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it still sounds like sentences for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, I watched that dub of Gundam Wing again a couple months ago. That got over big, <laughs> and it was total nonsense. Yep. <laughs> oh, look at Nikki's sad yeah, face. Just <laughs> he's, he's sad because of... See, his hairstyle, when you see it like this, it looks like he has some kind of funky <laughs> mohawk, but in all the other art, it's like he has weird bangs, like fucking Tenchi Muyo or something. Yeah. <laughs> The, the big fluff in front of his head. There's there's one bit here in the description where they, where they talk about the big tray, which is a pretty great... There you go. The, <laughs> you All of you can only move... Uh, none of you can move in three dimensions. It's a two-dimensional game. Yeah. I was like, this, this, is, this is a great bit of tactics. Too bad no one can make use of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the actual fight, Zaku's can, like, jump and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, like, you can get on top of stuff and probably even just jump on top of the big tray and shoot it. Because I, I'm pretty sure that most of its weapons were the cannons. Yeah, they're kind of mounted in front. Like, I think they have a few in the back. Mm-hmm. Did the one-hit kill thing work on ships from the back, too? I'm pretty too? sure not. Oh. No, on ships, I think they just had weak points with, like, pop, you know, bridges and stuff. And yeah. Okay. It's because definitely... doing this has made me like, maybe I should dig out my PS2. And... I was totally thinking that as well. Like, maybe I should just play a little bit of, of Zionic Front again. Because, like... But then it doesn't hold up. It probably up. doesn't hold up at all. Like... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, to be quite honest, ever since I played Encounters in Space, like, there hasn't really been a Gundam game that felt quite right. Um, like Climax uh, versus games, but uh, yeah, well, yeah, the first, the first. I, I thought Battle Universe was okay. I don't think I've tried that one. I, there's a few that I haven't played yet. Like I, I have the Unicorn one for PS3 that I really need to at least try at some point. Uh, and I think that one was made by like the same people as uh, as Encounters and um, uh, Climax. You see, Climax. You see, like yeah. also played really well, except for the fact that if you use any unit that had a, a rapid firing weapon, like you were just bad, because rapid yeah. fired rapid firing weapons worked so badly in that game. Uh, Man, I felt like I spent that whole game just side strafing and firing. Though. <laughs> I don't know. The versus games just felt a lot more dynamic to me. Yeah. In terms of the enemies you fought and whatnot. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, although I'm also a little sad that like. The versus style kind of faded away once they, like once extreme versus became a big thing. Right. Yeah. It's a lot. It's it started off as kind of clunky and now it's really really fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's. I guess. I guess like it's become a new virtual one. Mm-hmm. I guess in a way, like I'm not entirely sure which like which between Encounters in Space and Gundam versus Zeta Gundam is my favorite because both of them do play 
very well. Also, Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam has an insane story mode. It is so Oh, it's good. so great! It's so good! <laughs> you mean like, don't you mean like it has like 30 insane story modes? Yes. It's pretty much, like it, it branches at literally every point just to be like, hey, what if... What if each and every one of Jared's girlfriends didn't die horribly? <laughs> what if What if Camille never insane. met Jared? What if Jared didn't mention that Camille was a girl's name? Yeah. <laughs> so looking up, apparently that uh, Gundam Unicorn game was developed by Club. Right. Right. Uh, I remember... Before they mm -hmm. started doing Dark Souls for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Weird. Which, like, honestly, considering From Soul, uh, considering Frums is From Souls, yeah, the next I mean, the new the new crossover. I mean, yeah. That's pretty much where they are now. But like, considering Frums is a past experience with mecha games, like, yeah, they are the right devs for that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And like, honestly, it's it's interesting to see how they went from like making those styles of games to going on. To to making Dark Souls. Well, Demon Souls to be, to be technical. Yeah. And I really am, I don't know. am excited to see them go back and try to go back to Armored Core after Dark Souls. Yeah. Do some stuff. Yeah. See, thank you about that. Like, all this talk again, so this is like, uh, the other day I went back and rewatched my video of um, when I recorded um, a little bit of. Uh, the Asar. Asar, and like that just that that game just makes me sad all over again. <laughs> oh my god, that bad, huh? It's so bad. It's so bad. I put that video up in I put that video up in 2013. I had that video recorded for like a year or two before that point, and it's still bad. I still think it's really bad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he, he sent that game to me, and I think I paid too much. Probably. <laughs> Might I didn't pay anything. <laughs> yeah, I paid freaking ninety dollars for that game. It's terrible. Ouch. That's really sad. I, I don't even think I, I love it. that translation of Agar's uh, retreat Sheet. message. Sheet. <laughs> Pulling out. It's just like he, he <laughs> first says, like, "Oh no, the engine's broken." They're like, "Oh no, we're gonna just drive away now." <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. Ace R is a terrible game. <laughs> oh my god! It's just oh, I'm I'm just gonna have to like link to the video in my comments in the in the yeah. description here because it is just so bad. Like it. I'll have to look at that. I've never played any of those Ace oh games. Uh, the first three are actually very good. Well, uh, yeah, the first three two are and great. three are very good. Well, one two or two. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's why it hurt the most. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Like I'm not gonna say that I was a huge fan of the Ace series before that point. Like I played one and two, and like they were okay. And I, I, I pretty much skipped th uh, three, even though like it had a lot of neat stuff in it. But yeah. I was like, you know what? I'll give Asar a try. Like I wasn't that big of a fan of the series up until this point, but like, okay, let's give it a try. Maybe they've done something new to to like revitalize everything. And just no. Oh my freaking well, god! They did some new things yes. to revitalize things. It just didn't work out well. It's so slow. <laughs> it is so slow. Like the all right, like. There are two, I'll say the two biggest fatal flaws of how that game plays. The first is that uh, camera control is basically none. Uh, the right stick doesn't control the camera at all. The right stick is how you uh, do uh, transformation modes. And so that means that for most of the units in that game, because most of them don't have transformation modes, the right stick does literally nothing. Uh, and so like the only way you can rotate the camera is by like targeting something otherwise it's always behind you if I remember right oh that's awful uh, the second fatal thing that they do is um you need to completely finish your like your attack animation needs to 100% completely finish before your next attack can trigger and what this seems to mean in a lot of cases is that the bullet needs to hit and fade away first. So, like, there, ah. are, there are parts oh, there are wow. parts in the video where you can clearly see... Like, I'm playing the first Orgus mission, and there's parts where you can clearly see Orgus bring its gun up and try and fire, and nothing comes out because the bullet is still traveling to the enemy. 
<laughs> Whoa. That's horrible. And then, and then on top of that, it does the climax UC thing where the bullet has li has zero tracking. So the bullet right. the bullet does auto target to like try and and do like a little bit of course correction to the enemy, but like once it fires, it's fired. And, gotcha. and considering you have like so little control over how the how your attack goes. Uh, like obviously, like there are units that have like tracking weapons. Like the Orgas has homing missiles, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. But just you're, and, th and this then this feeds into like this actually feeds into the other big problem I had with the game, which like, for the Orgas mission wasn't that bad. Like, uh, your your good attacks are limited by a super meter, and you build up your super meter by using, uh, by using your normal attacks. All right, whatever. That's that's Ace has kind of done that for a while. It kind of makes sense. Another, like, on the other, one of the other missions that I played was the first Full Metal Panic one, which is the mission. Yeah, see, that's what I meant by the name. They call it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. And see, I think it's Agar Agar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't like clue into that. Like, I just saw like a Agar or Eager. I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's. That's a first yeah. and last no, name. No, I, I only noticed it because I did uh, Space Beyond the Blaze first, and that was the whole fourth full thing. Yeah, if, if I played through in a different order, that would probably make it a lot more sense. Like, I probably wouldn't notice that. Um, so, yeah, in the first Full Metal Panic mission in Ace R, it's the fight against the Behemoth. And the gimmick of that fight is the Behemoth is, because it has the Lambda uh, driver turned on, it is unaffected by normal attacks which means you need to ineffectually attack it with your shotgun to build up your super meter to turn on your lambda driver and then use the right lambda driver attack that the game wants at that time, which it doesn't tell you, in order to uh. actually do any damage to the behemoth. Uh. And you have, like, Why would you, that do that? Horrible. you have three lambda driver attacks that you can use, and like all of them turn off the lambda driver once you use it. Uh. So Yeah, that's atrocious. So the and then they made that unicorn game, so have fun with that one. <laughs> I, like, I'll be honest, I've heard good things about the unicorn game, though. Yeah, I know. I, I, to be fair, they basically, even when they were making it, they said ASR was like, they made the game to basically get used to making stuff on PS3. <laughs> the, the thing that kind of frustrates me is that, like, so it wasn't even, like, a first, like, it wasn't even released near the launch of the, of the PlayStation 3. Like, it was released well in. There was a launch Gundam game for the PlayStation 3 that played better than ASAR. Which I actually have a need to play. I I keep meaning to go back and like seriously putting some time into it. Like it's it's not that great. Like it's I'm not gonna say it's bad, but it's not very good. Um, Is that the one that had all the out of suit combat? No. No, um... no that one's more recent. Uh, that, no, that, oh, that, no, that, that's, that's a PlayStation about, 4. No. Kaitera's talking about one they made uh, for the Xbox 360 in Japan. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. And it never came here. And it was really cool because it was like this whole shooter thing where you were a foot soldier and you could get in tanks and stuff. You could also like get in mobile suits and hijack other mobile suits. Like, it essentially felt like Battlefield set in, gun in 0079. Right. Yeah. And it... I don't think it like, sold very well in Japan because it's an Xbox game. And it <laughs> never came here. And it was, Lame. Yeah. Which, it looked like the coolest idea. I don't know how it actually played, but... Mm. Yeah, no, um... Which, which, which one is the... It's called... The PS3 one's called Crossfire. Yeah, Crossfire. Yeah, like, it's, it's okay. Or oh, I think the one I'm thinking of is uh, Target Insight. Ah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was the Xbox 360 one. Okay. It was supposed yeah. to come here, but never did. Okay. Considering how Xbox 360 things sold in Japan, like I actually am kind of surprised that it didn't bother to go through the work. Yeah, cause, like the idea of just being a foot soldier and like running up to a, you know Arc 79 to hop in. Like, such a yeah, yeah, for sure. And that could have probably got over in the West. Yeah, probably. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that sounds like it would have been something that would have competed with uh, like uh, Mech Assault. Yeah, and then Titanfall comes out just a couple years ago and acts like it's doing something cool, and no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I love Titanfall too, but yeah, I was really annoyed when they're like, "Oh yeah, no one's ever done this before." I'm like, first off, Shogo Mobile Armor Division came out in like 1999, dudes. 
Checking <laughs> out, there's a Gundam game that did it too. Um, was Blast so good. Corpse in like '96. <laughs> or yes, yeah, Blast yeah. Corps. Oh, that's a game that needs. Oh, that needs shooter. a new one. No, it's a. Uh, okay, it's not even really a shooter. Like there are some yeah. some of the vehicles have weapons, but it's. I got... It's like a puzzle game, yeah. right? Yeah, like, pretty much. Real time puzzle game. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Man, that is a game that needs to have an HD remaster. <laughs> like, yeah. The, they're they're going back to like the bottom of the well for all these HD remasters. And no one's thinking about going to Blast Core. Like what? Come don't, on! Don't worry, I'm sure it'll be on the you know, N64 classic movie. <laughs> yeah. oh, on the like God. five they make. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see about that. Yeah, but yeah, I see where you get these guys being kind of like assholes to each other. I just kind of read it as like good-natured ribbing in a military mm -hmm. unit. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's just it's just like for me, there were some like very specific points where it seemed like the characters were like, "Wow, you are just a raging asshole." Yeah. Like uh, Charlotte's introduction, where she basically goes off on the on the team, thinking that it's because she's a lady that they don't have her mobile suit. It's like. Well, she's always Whoa. trying to snipe at Matt and stuff. I actually kind of like it though. Yeah, it's yeah, all right. Her, her and Nikki get this real big rivalry. Mm -hmm. going. Yeah, that, that that part is pretty good. And then, then them not knowing what submarines are, <laughs> <laughs> and pointing out that you know Zion doesn't do water stuff. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. space colonies. Yeah, their lack of naval power. Which is funny because if you look through uh, various mobile suit designs, Zeon ended up making like all the all the aquatic five or six different aquatic units during the one year yep. war. Well, I, I like the, not even during the one year war. Like I'm pretty sure that ninety percent of all the aquatic mobile suits in all of Universal Century belong to a Zeon faction. Probably. Yeah. Like there may be there may yeah. be one or two that belong to the Earth Federation. Uh, there's a few. I, I don't know if they're in this game, but yeah, there's a few mobile was, variations. With... I was saying, yeah, they're just like GM variants, aren't they? Yeah. 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 There's just like one Aqua GM, and it doesn't get used in anything but Unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Because Unicorn was all about bringing back every MSV they could. But yeah, we're actually like this is. Before the Federation has mobile suits, so it's just kind right. of mm -hmm. ruining tanks and stuff. How many more missions do we have to go through before we actually get to seeing a Gundam? <laughs> uh, uh, two more, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, know I think uh, I, ha I have a list here, actually. Yeah, it's next is another um, Igloo. Igloo mission. Yeah, the next one is Igloo, then is the first of uh, mobile suit Gundam. Okay. Oh, is, so, is then the first MSG? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so two until we see a Gundam. Um, so amusingly, um, I actually, like, in my own playing, I have obtained a Gundam before oh, I yeah. got to that point. And not just because of, like, not just because I evolved up to one, like, I... Well, you start out with... Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, technically you also Gundams. start out with two. Um, but because of the uh, evolving I've been doing... Uh, for these recordings, I just uh, just a bit ago unlocked the um, uh, incomplete mud rock. Uh, oh, so are you actually grinding off on the side? A, a bit. Like, so what my intent is is each video I should have like a new team. Um, oh. So like basically, I if I didn't get enough XP to evolve everyone at the end of a mission, then I'll just do something off on the side to uh, evolve everyone. Okay. Um, which definitely makes going between some of these missions a little difficult. Yeah. I am in, in my playing, I'm pretty close to the end of the One Year War, uh, and I still have a bunch of stuff to <laughs> fill in from that, nice. so... That's probably the right yeah, way to do it. It's a good way yeah. to go about it, and and it, it, it's helping to keep me like fairly close to uh, to what's being. Used. I actually ended up uh, evolving a double Zeta Gundam and then just selling it to get money to buy a bunch <laughs> of Zeon crap. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like a true patriot. 
I mean, just so you know, Abby, I made you in my game as a creative okay. character, and you're, you're running around in a Kshatriya. I'm so happy for that. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and you are, of course, in a Zion uniform. Uh, I mean, what else yeah, would it course. be? <laughs> of course, what else? <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't know what you guys run with. When I make this game, I generally just make a bunch of people I know as creative characters and <laughs> just use them. Uh, for me, I'm, I uh, mostly get the pilots that I like. But yeah. So that actually is a little bit difficult in this game because um, in other G-Gens of this style, uh, all the characters tend to be in the shop already. Like You won't have all the... Uh, you may not have all the ships, uh, but you generally do, and you may not, and you definitely don't have all the mobile suits you need to evolve up to them. Uh, but it usually gives you all the characters uh, available to purchase. Um, but in Genesis, like all the characters need to be unlocked by completing uh, by completing all the quests. Gotcha. Yeah, a lot of times it'll be like you complete the missions they're in. So at the end of the uh this set you basically have the entire midnight mm -hmm. yeah at the end um, at the end of this one and, and, I, and I, it, it will get shown at the end of the mission but like the way it, yeah. the way it tends to work is the series heroes don't tend to be unlocked until the very end uh, yes. but a and, but a side character which is the feature of the mission tends to be the one that's unlocked so like as folks will remember from uh, the last mission, uh, the guy who was uh, the gu the gunnery sergeant the gunner. of uh, yeah of the uh, the Ormond Gunder, um, he was the one that got unlocked by completing that mission. Gotcha. There's a lot of pilots who you just unlock them by unlocking a specific mobile suit for production. Yeah, like uh, the bad guy from the Blue Destiny games. When you unlock Nimbus. Him. Yeah, when you unlock, I want to say it's the E3. Uh, it's it's yeah. Probably, uh, that's how you unlock it. Yeah, it's probably the Afri. It is. Yeah. I can remember. I got four really it. fast because I got the uh, Psycho Gun. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, I I've unlocked um, someone from Missing Link uh, by getting uh, her Zaku, uh, which you can actually oh, the yeah yeah the bishop, which that's a kind of interesting unit that you'll see later on. Um, not in this mission, though. Uh, she's like one of... Well, doing it this way, too, she's like one of three, four new types I've been able to get, period. <laughs> I think it's just three. The, um... Yeah. I was gonna say. But yeah, I... I it's... I, I like... On one hand, I like the way that they're handling characters this time because it does encourage you more to use, like, not the main characters, not the the, the major characters. Like, it encourages you to use secondary uh, people um, yeah. because you usually like that's the people that you get before you can get. Like, you will get all the white base crew before you get Amuro. Like, you'll get you'll get Lorore and uh, and Mac before you get. Uh, before you get Nikki and Charlotte. Oh, you can get Amaro pretty quick. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you Amaro just have to up max out the get gauge for oh, the gun. that's right. Yeah. That's right. So I had him and Char really fast, because Char is also a really yeah, easy quest. Yeah, it's, it's like just do four... You just have to unlock his No, Char is do four, um, uh, four chance steps in two turns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Quattro was another one you had to max out his get gauge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was I especially went for Quattro, Char, and Full Frontal. <laughs> and Johnny right in for my Char squad. Of course. Perfect. Yeah. Of course, the downside okay. to the way that they handle characters in this is that my favorite character I'm not going to get until we're off, like halfway through almost to the end of this series, and that makes me sad. Because... Yeah. Who's that? Uh, Bernie. Bernie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. 0080 is the end of the one-year war. Like we're not gonna yeah, finish. I, let me see when that when we'll get to that. That's it's quite a it's quite a ways. That's, yeah, I mean you also have to remember there's gonna be like 80 stages in this game. They're just the last battle. Of one <laughs> yeah, the very first 0080 stage is 22 missions in. Yeah, 
So it'll be a very long and, time until I can get Bernie. And then the second one, which you have to do to unlock him, is like a while after that. <laughs> yeah, so just to point out, we'll, we'll know this next time, but the way the one-year war goes is there's fighting for like a week, and then there's a stalemate for eight months where nothing happens. Yeah. Because <laughs> during that week, they had managed to kill off half of all of humanity, and they're like... Should probably calm down a bit. So <laughs> between the next mission also talks yeah. a little bit about like why there's a stalemate, um, yeah. and 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 like there's that aspect of it, but there's also um, there's also like the the tactics uh, side of it yeah. where basically Zeon gets super bogged down. They didn't quite actually realize how difficult it would be to. Like to supply and maintain their forces throughout all these fronts, and like, well, well, the mobile suits are better than the Type sixty ones. Uh, it's not that they completely outclass them. Um, if the Type sixty ones have the right tactics, they can still take out enough Zaku's, um, or at least get the drop on them. Um, so, like, and and some parts of the one year war side stories try and paint Zeon as being very resource strapped and so like they they try and present this front that like the only reason why Zeon didn't just roll over the Earth Federation is because they couldn't actually field infinite Zaku's whereas the Earth Federation can field infinite Type 61's and then eventually field infinite GM's The Gundam had a lot of spare parts. The Gundam had enough spare yeah. parts to make like seven additional Gundams. It's like it's crazy. It's, it's crazy what they say they do with this with the Gundam spare parts because there's there is literally at least one other Gundam that they make from those spare parts, like a proper full scale RX seventy eight style mm -hmm. Gundam. And then apparently they say that they send all the spare parts down to Earth and they make all the ground Gundams out of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's amusing how much they have retconned the One Year War in. Oh my goodness! Yeah. You know, the entire... Like the original, and you actually see that as you play through yeah. this yes. when you go through the original mobile suit missions, and then the side stories will have the same stuff going on, but it'll be a, like a different map completely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. There is also like a comment made in this mission which suggests like there is another. Like, there actually should have been another mission that we've seen that shows another side of this, but actually, like, after this stage, we jump forward, like, two months in the one-year war. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but, like, the... the original... In the, in the, anim, in the anime, it's kind of suggested that there's, like, maybe a total of, like, 30 or so mobile suits across both sides. Um, if when you start looking at all the side stuff, like it basically balloons out to thousands. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it, I think it's more than thirty, just because like we see more than that in the original show. But... Yeah. It it's the the, the show it's... the show paints both sides as being very um, very low in in their total numbers, and then it just balloons over time. Uh, so oh, that... just a moment ago, uh, it just showed off a bit on the Get Gate, which I, I know we uh, talked about a little bit. So one thing that's a little bit different in the way Genesis handles guest units uh, compared to um, previous uh, G Gens of the style is uh, in previous G Gens of the style, uh, what would happen is if you basically leveled up a, char a guest character, um, you would you could get like you could get that unit at the end of the mission um, and like how that worked was a little bit different from game to game um, but in uh, Genesis your guest characters basically don't gain experience they get uh, they have this get gauge and if you fill up the get gauge uh, then that unit gets added to your production list automatically which is useful for some of kind of it's useful for some of these missions because um, it, one thing Genesis seems to do is have like a lot of variants that have basically no difference at all except for their books. Yeah, uh, like 
the Minray, the Minray Fenrir Zaku's that you have here are, they're just Zaku's. Like they're 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 just. Uh, their stats are slightly better, but by like ten I, more okay. defense. I think you mean just Bajornans. <laughs> yeah. The black history has not yet. <laughs> no. Um. But like, Although... I don't know if you can evolve to a. Uh, Midnight Fenrir Zaku because I've, no, look, I've looked at the you... evolved list of both a Zaku and a Midnight Fenrir Zaku and they're the same. No, what you, you can unlock is... them through designs. Okay. That makes uh, sense. Also, what you do is you get a Zaku too and you shove one of the Midnight Fenrir pilots in. Uh, yeah, that okay. too. But that doesn't add to the production list. No, it just changes the Zaku path. Yeah. Uh, it's... But uh, as I say, the Black History hasn't happened yet. There is a turn A in the game. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds about right. That is that is D Gen tradition. Um, yeah, the, yeah. Because after after you beat all the actual normal stages, it unlocks a, uh, at least one, maybe two, like in the game stages that are just complete random bullshit. Right. And traditionally, you one of those is a full powered dark history turn A. <laughs> you have to fight. Yeah, that is very traditional D Gen. The, the G-Gens of this style like very much tend to have uh, turn A as like, like, the Black History turn A as either a secret unit or as a secret boss. Mm -hmm. Which, like, if you know anything about what turn A is, that makes a lot of sense. Right, right. Basically what they're getting at is the turn A Gundam ended the history of Gundam. Pretty much. It is yeah. ridiculously powerful. Um, it, like it, it, the funny thing is that it, do, it doesn't even really seem to come across that way like in its own show. Um, it and its rival, like they just seem to be regularly powerful. If you compare the way they look in, uh, in their show, like sort of how a lot of other Gundams look in their show, like Turn A is just a very sturdy, fairly plain Gundam, uh, whereas Turn X is kind of a fairly normal esque um, funnel using uh, mobile suit. If you actually look at, like, if you watch the Black History episode and sort of, like, really pay attention to, like, what actually happened, like, those mobile suits are absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Because they destroy all, like they destroyed all um, uh, electronics in, the, in like the entire Earth sphere. It is right. ridiculous. <laughs> they just they ended war by destroying everything. Yeah, they destroyed civilization. Like the only spoilers for a show that <laughs> you may or may not have watched. Before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a show that statistically no one has watched. Turn A is really good. Also, I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on Blu-ray Blu right in English That's now. That's true. That's fair. You're on Blu-ray in English. Aww. But no, you're, you're right. You're right. Uh, Turn A is actually really good. I For sure. I should get the Blu-rays because I have a bunch of Hong Kong subtitled DVDs. <laughs> and boy, those <laughs> translations <laughs> those translations are so funny. Um, so good. They pretty sure that's the version I watched initially. <laughs> they translated Mobile Suit as Machine Muppet, and that is oh yes, that is the version I watched. That is that. absolutely <laughs> the best way to translate Mobile <laughs> Suit. Yep, completely accurate. One hundred percent. It is so good that I had to use I had to use Machine Muppet <laughs> as the name as, as the unit type name for my own. <laughs> My own robot series. It's so good. Oh. Uh, you are using a saber just awesome. Yeah. I was kind of curious about that. At why? <laughs> so, I, I, well, it evolves to a core fighter and that evolves to a gun. Yep. Oh, okay. Or, that's fair. Or it evolves to a neo core fighter and that evolves to a double zeta. Well, shit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but does the neo core fighter evolve to something for. Uh, the Sentinel. Uh, I no, don't think so. No. Oh, that's a shame. No. I don't think the G attack is it, but Double Zeta evolves to. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll have to do that eventually, anyway. 
because uh, I really like the S Gundam and the XS Gundam because they're both such they're both such silly units. Yeah. Oddly, that story's not in this game. It's so, I don't know why. Yeah, it is a shame, because that actually would have been a really, really good filler. Uh, like, I, yeah. I, I mentioned it last episode, when we were sort of talking about the timeline in general for um, for Genesis, but, like, basically, once you get out of the one-year war, like, it is, it is straight linear with huge gaps from, like, from then until you get to um, uh, Hathaway's Flash, mm-hmm. which you only get if you've got the season pass, which sort of came with every copy. Um, yeah, I think actually, I think all the DLCs are just straight up. Yeah, I think, that ended up being, which, I think that ends up being the case as well. Um, is actually very awesome of them to offer a crap ton of free DLC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and it, it's just kind of a shame that they didn't. That the, like, I like some of the series that they did uh, decide to put uh, focus on. Like, Zionic Front is kind of a crazy thing. For them to have even put in, like, I think that's incredible that they did it. Um, Missing Link is kind of a weird one. Uh, Battlefield Record uh, 001 is kind of a weird one. Uh, although, like, I'm super glad because that's the one that has the first official uh, version of uh, Seventh in it. And I really like Heavy Full Armor Seventh Gundam. That is a really dumb mobile suit that I really like. <laughs> Sure, we'll see about. Oh, I'm totally gonna be getting it eventually. Sadly, it's an oversized one, so you need to make it a master unit, or just or, or or give up a slot. Oh, it really is. Yeah, the the, the heavy full armor seven is the normal full armor seven. It's just so that that actually sounds. Oh, about yeah, right. I got the normal full armor one, not yeah. the heavy one yet. <laughs> yeah, the heavy, the heavy one's... one's silhouette on the production screen is hilarious because it's just almost entirely black, and then you can see the tiny V fin in the corner. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, the previous D-Gens have usually been, like, you could sort of make out what you're going to evolve to by looking at the silhouettes. Uh, in Genesis, like, it's impossible. Like, even, like, I could tell you broadly what it's probably evolving into. Like, that's probably evolving into a GM, or that's probably evolving into a Gundam. Uh, but, like, anything more than that... eight thousand of them. Yeah, but, like, anything more than that, like, pff, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Also, they're sending out their attack helicopters. Yeah. <laughs> in an underground bunker. Yep. I mean, if, now we're really in trouble. I mean, they're secret units, so, like, whatever. Yeah. I, um, I need to double check what those evolved into as well. Uh, I don't think it was anything all that great. No, it probably wasn't. Um, if we had V, they'd probably evolve into a shark yeah, cube. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bummed this game kind of lucked out the later you see stuff. Yeah. yeah that's, that's one thing that uh, G Generation Spirits for PS2 back in. I lost that it was 2006, so like 10 years ago. That had. I think it was later than that, but not a lot. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty was, uh It was essentially the precursor to this game because it was an OUC, but it, was, it had to be stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I... Though, not as many side scores. Yeah, probably. Like, I... While I'm super happy at some of the side stories that are in here, like, even if I don't, like, care that much about some of them, like, the fact that they are in here at all, like, I think it's absolutely incredible. But I wish they went a little bit further in the timeline. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe for a sequel. Yeah, we'll see. Like, maybe... Um, like maybe they will make a Generations Two, where they'll make like something else that will do the back half of the Universal Century, and then I'm pretty okay with the timeline because everything culminating in Unicorn seems pretty appropriate. Yeah, it, it, that's it, true. It, All the stuff that happens after that, you could almost say it's completely different eras. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Going from the, the like the very beginning of the One Year War to Unicorn actually is a very very fascinating bit of storytelling. I just wish that they presented a timeline mode. Uh, because like yeah they, they yeah. tell you the dates but there's no way to, to be like okay give me the next mission in the timeline. I like I have to. Yeah, yeah I've been having to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've been doing research on wikis and actually going through the missions to see the dates that it tells you in the cutscenes, and even then I get a lot of stuff wrong and have to revise it. 
to be fair, it's also because it's probably like, you know, comics continuity where, oh, we messed this up. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Well, I think there's some of that, but some of it is also the mission structure in the game because, uh, like, you'll have a mission... They, they do the whole of W80 and the whole of uh, OHMS team in two missions each. Mm -hmm. But they'll split it up to where, like, stuff that happened in one episode and stuff that happened in another episode will happen to different parts of the same mission. Or in OHMS, they'll, like, they squish together some different episodes into one mission. <laughs> so, you can look at the banner and try and guess what's going to happen, but you might be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> But like that's that's kind of a shame that they didn't decide to spend a little bit more time on that. But like, it's basically twenty two, as you're saying, like twenty two missions to go from the start of the one year war to the first double O eighty mission, just on its own. Like, it's a lot of there's, content. There's a lot of missions you in can this get game still. Just to get through the one year war, that's probably going to be more missions than a Super Raw Wars game. Yeah, probably. Like, there's. I, I don't know. I have a gap in my timeline yeah. for the Battle of Solomon, which is like four or five different missions. <laughs> yeah. And then I have after that uh, a Bawaku, which, which I haven't gotten four. to yet. Yeah. A Bawaku at the very least has an igloo mission. It should have. Uh, it should have a Gundam mission. It should have an igloo, a Blue Destiny, and a Gundam mission at the least. Yeah. And one thing, once you beat a stage, if you go over and hit on the menu and if you hit I want to say it's L1 it's got this like universal link function which shows you other missions that tie into that huh. oh so but that's what that not... means because yeah, I, I saw um, it for the first time on this stage I, I didn't see it on uh, la the, um, the first igloo one I saw it on this one but there were but the, but the things were just blank you'll notice it when you get to Jabber Jabbero okay because uh, there's like three missions that take place there and then also it links to the uh, Zeta again mission where they go back there. Huh. So it's good to see. That feature is actually kind of helpful because you can see, you'll see the blank there, and the blank will mean it's another one that happens here, but you haven't gotten that far in that series yet. Yeah. So you might realize, oh, I actually have to go back and play something else. Yeah, or like uh, the Rise from the Ashes one, it links to like the double A three mission, which also happens in Australia, and then the yeah the big uh, fight. That same base. Mm. Neat. Yeah. Which, for the record, all rise from the ashes happens in Australia, <laughs> which is where that colony that we saw last time ended up falling. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, I did actually double check that one. Which you know, Zeon just knew that Australia would one day rise up and try to murder all of humanity, so they just decided to kill. Them. Well, they didn't. Well, they didn't do it intentionally. They were actually aiming for Jabur. I know. They were aiming for Jabura. That missed. I think what like, I think what happened is the Earth Federation fleet managed to knock it off course, but they, they right. couldn't do any better. Than that. But dropping large objects from space is hard. Well, I would say that dropping is probably easy. It's the the targeting, targeting maybe difficult. Yes. <laughs> well, like, or alternatively, doing it in a way that doesn't hurt people. Well, that's just not Zeon's no, Yeah, that was really not in no. the in the priorities no, there. Very like much said, the they hurt people just to get the chance to drop it. Half the human population died in one week. <laughs> through reckless use of colony drops and NBC weapons. Yeah. Which is why, like, act oh, hey, you just got the... Yeah, because I managed, I managed to max out Charlotte's... Um, and you get a big track. And then, yeah. The thing that sucks with the get gauge there is there was no way that you could have maxed out everything. Yeah, like, I I think that there might have been enough units oh, to um, to kill, sorry, there might have been enough units to kill to have gotten mats maxed out, uh, mm -hmm. but doing it within the seven turn time limit, uh, I don't know if that was possible. But they, I, I, I'm positive that Matt's exactly one will also show up in a later mission. So I'll just max it. Uh, yeah, you, he keeps the Zaku one the whole mm -hmm. way. Um, yeah. Later on, you get a goof and a couple of doms. That sounds about I right. I think Nikki's the only one whose unit actually upgrades. 
Yeah, Nikki goes from a Zaku to a Dom. Okay, yeah, yes, that is... I do remember that, yeah. And in, and in the actual game, like, your big thing wasn't getting new mobile suits. Like, you ended up... I think you could only actually have, like, four during the story. But you'd get new weapons to equip on yep. them, so you'd have, like, a Dom with, you know, the Zaku Kai's machine gun mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah it, it, th th that bit of the of the customization was actually pretty neat, and then there were, like, pretty... Like, there were good reasons for it. Uh, like for for mm -hmm. all the changes, like for like every option, um, yeah, I should try Zionic Front again. Like I, I bet it doesn't really hold up very well, but I should at least give it a try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, oh, yeah. so that was that was that mission. What did everyone think of it? Yeah, well, well... Uh, when I played it, it was a little annoying <laughs> with the time limit at the yeah. end there. I really came up close, even though I had some stuff that was overpowered. <laughs> yeah, like, the big thing about that part is, like, you have the two generators that are on the other end, and you basically have to rely on uh, Matt and um, uh, Lerore to uh, basically soloing them. Um, if Yeah, it's one of the few ones where you actually really, really need to make use of the uh, series characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you were at the point where you had a second battleship, actually, the second battleship deploys right there. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Gotcha. So. <laughs> All right. That might have helped. That might have helped. It's just the way that we're going yeah. through. It's just, yeah. Which is, I mean, to be fair, I don't think there's real difficulty slider, because, like, I did, you know, I, I've been jamming around with the Unicorn Arrow units and stuff. On the last Mobile Suit Gundam stage, I still had a really hard time. <laughs> so huh. I don't think it's, like, uh, as the game goes further... Like, yeah, the mobile suits you're fighting are technically better, but it's not that much of a double slider. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of how you approach it. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. other right. G-Gens of this, of this style have tended to be very similar to that. Like, there is there is a difficulty there's a difficulty scale from the f first mission of a series that goes on to the last mission of the series, but series to series, uh, the difficulty doesn't, like, scale in any sort of meaningful or linear way. Uh, like, obviously, some of the previous... Uh, G gens, uh, like th there have been problems where some of the missions, or some of the series, because of the way that they're structured, are unusually easier or harder than others. Um, like 0080 in G Gen F, which is impossible if you have just the starting. Uh, unit. Oh right, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, you cannot beat uh, 0080 if you only have just the starting stuff, which means that because you get stuck. Until you until you clear double O eighty before you can choose anything else, your game is just over. <laughs> Good job. That's why you should do the smart thing and start G Generation F by playing Endless Walls and getting a Wing Zero custom to ruin everything. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> or like go into X and get a Leopard Destroy. Uh, eventually, like that's a little bit more work. Yeah. But like Leopard Destroy is just broken in that game. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, but these these more recent ones have kind of done the thing where they are as hard or as easy as you want to make them. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, especially this one because one of the DLC maps is in fact an easy leveling <laughs> map. Gotcha. Yeah. And then every mission has the difficulty selection. Yeah, that too. And there's things you need to do to like, or things you need to unlock, or that need to be played on higher difficulties to unlock. Mm -hmm. And the higher ones are really hard. I tried the first one of o Oath MS on Extra the other day, and nope. Uh -uh. Every, everything was nearly killing every one of my guys in one hit, and mm -hmm. all the stuff just had a million HP. Yeah, on, on Extra, they're basically expecting you to have, like, level 50 units and stuff. Yeah. So probably, probably by that point, you've already made your team. You're not leveling stuff up. You're not, you're right. not like, evolving through the tech trees anymore. You're... You're now you just have something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you just have something to do with all that superpowered yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well, now, now that you've actually made your team, now that you've finished uh, yeah. finished unlocking everything in the uh, in the the catalog. Now what are you going to do with the game? Play through on get all the trophies. Play through on super hard. All right. So with that, that'll be it for us cool. for uh, for this week. Um, well, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye, see everybody. Ya.